Well, hello there. As you can see, I'm at the grill today. I'm making huli huli chicken. Want to learn? Well, why don't you come on over and join me? I'll show you by starting with the sauce. So don't forget, like the video, and if you want to join the tribe, subscribe. My take on Huli Huli is that it's very similar to teriyaki in many ways. This, to me, is a Japanese Polynesian fusion. I use both brown sugar and pineapple juice to sweeten it. I'll usually make my sauce a day or two ahead to allow for proper blending of flavors. And usually I store it in a quart mason jar in the refrigerator. So, to start off with, you want to use a saucepan of at least one and a half quarts in size, like this one is. And now, to that, let's add two cups of your favorite soy sauce. To that, we will add two cups of pineapple juice. Now, I'm just going to suggest doing this over medium to medium high heat because you don't want it to burn. And so you should stir it often. And I will usually either use a whisk or a sauce whip myself. Today I'm going to use the whisk. Now add one teaspoon of fresh ground ginger. And I use the paste from the uh, produce section of the store. Uh, it's already pre-ground for me. You know, that way I don't have to mess with trying to grind up the ginger root. Now, next, add one, well, actually, I'm gonna add two teaspoons, or you can add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar to it. The difference is about one teaspoon. The tablespoon is three teaspoons, roughly. And if you want, you can also use rice vinegar, but I'm using apple cider. Now, I'm going to put in four cloves of minced garlic, or shredded. The recipe itself actually only calls for two cloves, but I like a little extra. Now add two cups of brown sugar. And I don't know what using something other than brown sugar would taste, whether it would taste the same or not. So I'd recommend sticking actually with brown sugar directly. Now once this actually starts to boil and such, you could call it uh, good to go and it is an actually a very excellent sauce at this point. A little bit thin, it'll have the consistency still of the teriyaki for the most part, or the teriyaki bit of the soy sauce, but it will still be very runny. So, in order to prevent that, I will be adding uh, 12 ounces of tomato paste. I'll thicken it up, bring it close to that of barbecue sauce out of a bottle extra. Now this part is going to take about 20 minutes to bring it to a boil and get it uh, to start to thicken. Now you can see why you have to have such a big pot too. And you can see I make a mess of things too. I don't want that. 
So once you get it all mixed up together, you can just basically let it sit and start to come up to a boil. Well, now that this is cooked long enough, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the stove off and actually move it off of the heat so that it can start to cool down. Once it has cooled down enough, I can go ahead and pour it into my storage jar that's gonna go into the refrigerator. But I want it to be cool enough that it doesn't cause the glass to break. See you in a little while. Well, now if you've stuck around to this point in the video, I have something more for you. In the description is a link to my printable recipe that you can download for yourself. Now, also please hit the like and the subscribe buttons below and now for the surprise. Tomorrow I'm going to be using this sauce and I'm going to add it after this to show you how to use the sauce. I don't know, everybody goes, should be pretty simple to use. Well, there is a technique to grilling and using sauces so that you don't look. I will see you guys tomorrow. After I clean up the mess, of course. So, let's go ahead and get started. Yes, I'm just using a Walmart brand gas uh, propane grill. So. Well, I'm gonna take here some, I don't even use this I'm going to take here some chicken breasts, or not breasts, but thighs, excuse me, and on them I just use some of this here all-purpose seasoning. This one is a salt-free one, so. So I'm just put a little bit on there. You can use any seasoning you really want for it. Uh, I just use this one as a general purpose. You can use actual seasoning, salt if you want. Uh, Italian seasoning, herb de Provence, uh, anything along that line that you want, or just use a little salt and pepper. That's up to you. But you do want to probably pre-season your, your chicken a little bit with your favorite seasoning for that. Now this isn't the only way to use the sauce. It's just the way that I'm going to use it for this, and it's perfect for a grilling season. Which, eh, for some people, grilling season is year-round. I'll put a little bit on there. Like I said, this one is salt-free, so... And if you see me fall over, you know, don't worry, it's me tripping over the, the, the uh, floor goddess, or, or uh, AKA Daisy. She's out here to help supervise to make sure that I cook the chicken out of it. And... The way I'm going to do it on the grill is I pre-cook the chicken most of the way, you know, get a good uh, outside season, 
or not season, uh, sear on it. Uh, and then I'll turn the heat down and actually move it to the upper rack. And then I'll start to baste it and bake it. Uh, somewhat direct but reduced heat. And then it's multi uh, layer. Now, the fact that they're using chicken thighs uh, does mean that there's a little bit more fat on there, which means that it will uh, melt, render off, whatever you would like to describe, uh, thus causing some flutter. The fact that these ones are boneless and skinless, they will cook a lot faster. Don't worry, I'm pretty sure that Gordon probably has something to say about my technique. But I'm sure he'd, he'd probably appreciate the flavor in the end. Now there's different ways to do the Lee chicken. You can uh, use it also as a marinade if you would like. Uh, marinate your chicken in it for a couple hours and then toss it into a baking dish and bake it into a crock pot, uh, slow cooker, an instant pot if you have one. Um, just do it or like I said, I am using it on a grill. Now even though, yes, the inside is still raw, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to even call it rare. It is raw, as somebody would like to say. But when I go to do the flip, it is going to be moved to the other rack. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying our base. So we're going to use the indirect heat on top here to start baking it and caramelizing the sugar. That's uh, so what's going to give it that nice pretty appearance. It's going to make it look like a, one of those $50 uh, steakhouse meals. Uh, even though you know you can pick this amount of chicken thigh up for probably about seven bucks. This will feed at least two, three people uh, just for this piece. Yeah, it could feed more depending if you don't eat as much. Because you don't eat as much doesn't mean you don't want to eat good food.
So, as you can see, I've started the basting process, so I'm going to go ahead and let it bake for a few minutes before I move on to the next. I don't know, it's only been about two or three minutes here. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but... Go ahead and... Ooh. About like I said, we are now going to move them to the upper. Got an audience from the crows there too. I don't know if you'll be able to hear that in the post-production or not. So, with that, now that it's moved, go ahead and turn down the heat a little bit more for the moment. You do want it to kind of cool down a little bit because the fact that uh, we are going to bake. And we're not going to bake at uh, 600 degrees or more, which is obviously what the gas grill can get to. back up a little bit I know it's only been about three minutes maybe let's go ahead and take a look at it though and as you can see trying to get that nice baked look on it a little caramelization but not bad. And that's what it's kind of about here, is caramelizing those sugars. As you do that, that's when it releases the flavor that everybody craves about with this. I'm going to try and remove some of this background noise. Uh, in post-production, but hopefully I can do that. And as you can see, I'm applying yet another layer to this. Yeah. 
And we're going to do this like three, four times at least. Sometimes a little bit more. Depends on how things are going. So, we'll be back in about three. Okay, I am sure that that's been about at least a good two, three minutes. And as you see, it's so nice and caramelizing. And at this point, any charring that you really get is usually just the sugar in the sauce charring. And remember, you got two different sources of sugar, both the brown sugar and the pineapple juice for sugar. And just go ahead and rotate that all over. And now we're going to apply more sauce. While I do that though, which is working directly over the flame, it's a little uncomfortable sometimes. So. After all, like we're supposed to be grilling the, the uh, and baking the chicken, not my hand or your hand. So always make sure to be safe while you're doing this. Don't want to add yourself to the menu. That would just be kind of like, hmm, wrong try. So, I'm just going to go ahead and apply a nice good coating of that. Okay, bring the heat back up. And go ahead and let it go ahead and bake for a few more minutes. And here we are, a good three ish minutes later. And let's go ahead and do one more real quick flip, but this time we're not going to sauce because we want to actually put a finished seal on that last layer that we put on over there. So, yeah, there will be a little charring to this. Because remember, that's just the sugar, though. And give that another three. Okay, well, that should be enough time there. So, we'll go ahead and fill the flame. And it's time to pull the meat. See how nice that is? Just the sugar chart. So, that is how you use the sauce. Now, hopefully, you go and make some yourself and enjoy it. Now don't forget, hit that like, the subscribe, and click the notification bell so you get told when I have more videos to upload. Bye.